Welcome to the Influence and Inspire podcast, episode 25. And I'm delighted to say my guest today is Kaylee Lewis, founder of Booth, an online marketplace. How are you doing, Kaylee? I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, um, have you had a good day today? Yeah, it's been nice and chilled. It was uh, my son's birthday on Saturday. So today I was just sorting out all of his presents, taking out the screwdriver and putting batteries in and it's been a long day, should I say? It's been a long day. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'll start, take you to my first question. So first of all, um, tell me a bit more about yourself. Um, I am 33-year-old um, mum. I've just got a, a one-year-old. Mm-hmm. Um, I work for Reed. So I do, um, I work for the recruitment. I look after the recruiters. So okay. I don't do recruitment. I do that side of Reed. So like online marketing basically hence why i started booth because it's something that i'm familiar with yeah um i also do stand-up comedy in okay. my spare time um and i play still pan for ebony as well oh, wow. um and i have um, um, a company called mini fetters which is like a day rave for babies and kids because i found that there wasn't um a place that kids can just go to party it's, all, it's always somebody's birthday but i wanted my son to go and be a little raver like me so i created mm-hmm. my own for babies <laughs> so yeah I can do a lot don't I well, yeah, hell of a lot hell of a lot I don't know where to <laughs> where to pick up on wow so oh gosh where do I start so you're a comedian yes yeah so you work for you work full-time or you work and you're also a comedian so um how often do you get on stage to do your comedy um it depends really so before I had a baby, it was quite regular. Yep. Um, and then I did my last show and I was eight and a half months pregnant. Okay. Um, and then I kind of started back. My first show was in March in Birmingham. Um, and then obviously COVID happened. So then I had to stop. Yes. But I was supposed to do a tour. Um, and we we're going to be going to like Sheffield, Leicester and a couple of different places. So, yeah, I've been doing, like, you know, the Wahala tour yep. and stuff yep. like that. Africa versus Caribbean, that kind of stuff. I was on those tours. So it was quite busy, which was quite good. And. I don't know how comedy's going to look now to the world. Yeah. Um, I'll stand yeah. up comedy, considering when I'm going through. Um, okay, so do you do any your comedy on like social media or anything like that? Because I know it's a lot of comedians are starting to do that. I don't, you know. I think I'm more just of a stand-up comedy person. I think the audience, for me, yeah. is where I get my energy and where I feed off. Yeah. Um, so some people can do the online stuff, but I think for me that wasn't something I wanted to delve into. It just didn't work for me. I prefer them to stand up live. Yeah, kind of. You need to fill the crowd. Yeah, yeah. Some people can do it online, but I think, like even people think because I'm a comedian, I can act. And I'm a bit like, no, I can't really act. I'm not really. (laughs) (laughs) No. Yeah. Um, And just another thing you you said, you've got, you've started, you've got a business for uh, kids raving. What was it called? Yeah. Mini fetters. Mini fetters. Okay, yeah. so how long have you, how long, when did you set up mini fetters? I set up mini fetters November last year and I did my first um, party for the kids in December. So it was a mini fetters Christmas party. Hmm. Done a Valentine's one and then we done a Easter party and then we was Oh, no, we was going to do an Easter party, I think. And then COVID happened, so we couldn't. However, um, and Hill Carnival picked it up. So we actually done a Zoom mini fetters party um, on the Notting Hill Carnival platform, which was great. So we were able to invite everybody from all over to just log into the Zoom and party with us. So that was great. Yeah. Um, So just how does that work? So if um, before COVID, how do you you actually organise that? How does it work? What's the music? How does that how does that all work? Well, funny enough, I've got two DJs. One's an adult DJ, yeah. um, DJ TFR, and then I've got a three-year-old DJ, which is my nephew who absolutely loves dinosaurs. <laughs> his name is DJ Rex. And um, when we done it with Notting Hill Carnival, he was the the only DJ for it because it was great because it's kids um, playing music for kids. So that was, you know, something that people aren't doing. And he's really good. He has his headphones on. He's got his YouTube. He's got his playlist and he sings along to the music as well. And what's great about that is that the kids will see somebody behind the decks and then they will think oh I want to get involved so they would come up and then grab a mic and start singing as well or be next to him while he's DJing so it was really getting the the, the kids to, to get involved. Wow and did you say he's a three-year-old DJ? Yeah three-year-old DJ. 
yeah. you've got to do something different in it yeah 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 i have i have to see that i have to see that um, yeah um, but <laughs> But yes, um, you're not even on this interview to talk about those those other businesses. But thanks for letting us know about them. They're, that's some amazing stuff you're doing, other than Booth. Um, so yeah, ten, they seven, on. seven income streams to become a millionaire. So yeah, I'm working on a couple more businesses. Wow, yes, <laughs> you got that. You got that. Yeah. So you just need a few more. That's it. Oh, excellent. Um, tell us about Booth and uh, when when was Booth created? First of all. Um, it was created um, June the 11th. So basically, I was looking for a couple of different products. So different like shea butter creams, um, because my son had a little bit of eczema. So I was looking for like raw shea butter. Where can I get that from? Then I'm like an accessories person. Oh, I need some earrings. And when you're in, um, in COVID times, all you're doing is online shopping. But then it was like, I wanted all of these things to come from black owned businesses. And there's no way to kind of search something from a black owned business on like Instagram or anything. So I was like, oh, wouldn't it be great if there was a place that had it? Um, so I kind of had the idea on the 9th of June. I told my sisters about it on the 10th of June and then I launched on the 11th of June. Wow. So that, that is very quick, very quick. Um, I'm assuming yeah. the fact that you've set up businesses before um, means that you know exactly what you're doing. Um, yeah, I think. My my background working for Reed, I've worked for the CV library. It's mm-hmm. I've done quite a lot of the, the online marketing stuff, so I kind mm-hmm. of knew what a marketplace is and what it requires. So because I had that background, I guess I knew what platform I was looking for, which makes it easier. Um, and yeah, I kind of find that a lot of people say we're going to start a business or I'm thinking of starting a business, yeah. and then it's ages to do. And sometimes if you've got an idea, because at, at that time everybody was doing the whole kind of black lives matter let's yeah. support each other people yeah, yeah. so it was like strike while the iron is hot so it was just like boom let's go can i just say i've, I've been on booth and you've got quite a few vendors on there so how did that happen how did you get vendors so quickly honestly i put it out there to my friends on, on the 11th of june i just sent it by whatsapp put it on my facebook put it on my instagram and within about a week we had over 400 users wow right now we've got over a thousand listings so we've got loads of things that you can buy Mm. and the the difference as well is um it's not just a marketplace it's for people to advertise their businesses as well so there's no other place where you can buy sell and hire from the black owned community so Mm -hmm. if you want to buy something you can obviously um if you want to sell something as a black owned business you can and if you want to hire somebody like a painter or decorator or a a nail technician or you know somebody to do your eyebrows it's Mm -hmm. more about that so i know there's quite a few um directories but again with a directory you then have to inquire about that person and i think sometimes that takes away the i want to buy now yeah yeah and mm-hmm. as, as I say, I've been on, I've been on Booth, and um, I've been on others, and others aren't set up at the moment. So, yeah. so all the other new ones that have been set up that I've managed to to touch on or or try to get onto haven't got the vendors on there. So I was quite surprised that you had so many people on there. That's why I was I'm very surprised that it was created in June. So, so that that's excellent. Um, I was yeah. I was going to ask you it... go on. Sorry. I was just going to say, I think it also could be because of me doing the other businesses as yep. I'm a comedian. People do know me and a okay. lot of people know that if I'm going to do something, then I do it. Yeah, and yeah. when I launched, it was, this is ready to go. So put your, your, your name down and put your listings up. And I think with many of the others, it's put your name down. We're going to be launching soon. Yeah, and I yeah, think yeah. that's the difference of it's great to say to somebody we've got something to look forward to but then it's like people want to know what they're signing up to yeah and yeah, I definitely. think one of the, the things that was a little bit difficult and why things kind of slowed down is because there were so many people who had the same idea that I had mm. and so many businesses thought okay let me register on everything so by the time yeah. that I launched it was like they were exhausted mm. oh we've mm. already signed up to play mini and they haven't done anything so why should we sign up to this yeah, yeah so yeah. that was I guess a little bit difficult because everybody's been signing up to so many things and I think at a point it's like oh my gosh just let me breathe so yeah yeah 
Um, and you said you you got the idea f- to set up booth because of the stuff that when you were going and looking for stuff for you in particular, was the desire to to spend your money with black owned businesses as well at the time. A hundred percent. I this this whole kind of thing that we say we want to support each other and then we we don't really support each other. Yeah, it's it's quite difficult, but it's also because we don't have a place to support each other, and I think that's what makes it quite difficult because. If I want to say, okay, I want to buy from 10 different black businesses today, mm-hmm. there's so much energy that I have to go to, to yeah. find their own website yeah. or to go on Instagram, find out if they're black owned yeah. and then into DM them, find out how much they cost, how much their shipping is, how much that, that process is so long. Yeah. yeah. And I get it. some people, this is how they, they do their business. But I think sometimes I think the bit of the downfall is if you're pair, selling like a pair of earrings and they're six pounds, mm-hmm. just say my earrings for six pounds. There's yeah. a lot of DM me for prices. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, on my side, I just wanted to be so transparent with the buyer mm. that they can just go in, see what they wanted, click buy, get it in the post. Yeah. You know, yeah. just simple as that. And I've got some really great vendors that when people do buy something, they say, thank you for buying from us. And, mm-hmm. you know, that they interact with them but they already get a sale without having to do any work yeah. all they've done is put their listing on and then they get sell yeah. that's what business is that's how fast-paced we are right now yeah you know mm-hmm. yeah i think i think you i think you're right because when i when i look for um, a black business well when i look for anything i think yes i want to spend my money with a black business and it's hard work it is hard work and yeah. You try, yeah. you try and look at what you can do with other businesses and you expect the same. And I, and I know we are kind of young in some of these, some of these businesses, but um, yeah. you're right. We, we have to make that experience a bit easier for people and then we'll get a lot more people who will spend there and it, and it won't just be black people as well. It'll be everyone, which is what we, what we um, want. And talking of um, everyone, what does Booth stand for? That's exactly what I was just going to say. <laughs> Booth actually stands for buy us for everyone. Right, okay. Because I, I do find that the black community, we invest our money in so many other communities, as in to get our nails done, we go Chinese, to get our hair, we go to Indian, to go mm. to, to get food, we go, you know, Italian. It's, we put our money into everything. And mm. where do people or where can people invest in us? and I remember growing up right and remember I'd go to like a Caribbean takeaway and you'd see white people in there and be a bit like oh look at them what are they doing in here Mm -hmm. and it was like why shouldn't they be in here they should be investing in us they should be putting their pound into our community as well and I think I wanted to create somewhere that wasn't just for us because I think sometimes we create something like oh my gosh yeah let's all buy black Mm -hmm. but in the next couple of months then everyone's gonna be like oh no things are too expensive I've gone back to yeah. doing what I do yeah. and yeah. I think I just wanted to make it available for everybody to be able to spend their pound mm-hmm. okay no excellent so you, and you mentioned a few things earlier that makes your um well makes booth different from other online marketplaces he just yeah. mentioned those three things again that you can buy sell and hire from booth and how does the hiring part work so everything is free yeah. so even if you're selling anything it's all a free process we yeah. just work the same way that amazon and ebay um and etsy do that you take um a we take five percent of your sale right. um which you know on a 10 pound sale that's 50p yeah i mean but you've been the sale so look at it like you're earning nine pounds fifty yeah. as yeah. opposed to yeah um and then the higher side is just the directory side of it mm-hmm. is that we, booth itself don't make any money from that yeah but then you can get inquiries to your business so if you've got a salon if you are a painter and decorator if you've got a butcher's you can put your business on there to advertise Mm -hmm. um, and not spend any money now the reason that we've done that is because if you come to a platform that you know you can get business from then you'll also see other businesses that you would buy from yes yes, so it's about getting the traffic onto the site and just making people aware that it's there Mm -hmm. um and hopefully then people will know it's there and then start to buy from it so and we've also got places um, where you can actually do like a featured post yeah. so even if you wanted somebody to hire you as a as I say a painter and decorator you mm-hmm. can just um put your business on and then do it as a feature so therefore we can still get money to from that person because we don't want people to be like oh yeah but they're 
there I am not paying anything and we're paying something. Yeah. There's so many different ways that you can try to advertise around Booth. And I think the main thing is just about advertising your business. Yeah. And do you have a lot of people who are, who are just advertising their business as opposed to selling items on there at the moment? Yeah, so we've got some handymen on there. We've got people who do podcasts oh, are yeah. on there as well. People who have coaching yeah. or like uh, I'll, mentoring. I'll be, I'll be going on there soon, don't worry. I'll be going on there soon. Yeah, because do you know what it is, right? Yeah. I like to, to listen to podcasts, but where do we go if we want to listen to podcasts? Right now, we just have to go to Spotify, but how yeah. do we know if it's a black-owned yeah. um, podcast? Mm -hmm. We don't. So the great thing is that I'm trying to create a place where everybody can just go and say, all right, I know this is a black podcast. I know this is a black YouTuber. Yeah. I know this um, coaching mentorship is going to be black. And that's what I want. So mm -hmm. um, it's not just a marketplace. It's something to kind of advertise a bit of everything. Yeah. Um, so just touching on that point, and I, I don't know how much detail you want to get into, but how do you establish that it is a black owned business when they contact you? This is the only thing that you can't do from any, any business isn't going to be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what I do is when people do sign up, I'm very kind of um, hands on. Mm -hmm. So when somebody signs up, I go to their Instagram, I go to their page and I try to find out as much information um, as I can yeah. about them. Mm -hmm. um, and I do put their, to, like I, in the welcome email, I put about them being a black owned business yep. in my advertising. I mentioned about being a black owned business. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's nothing that you can do to prove that somebody's yeah. a black owned business. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think it's the same with any type of business. How mm -hmm. do you prove that somebody is who they are? Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it would make sense if anybody from a different nationality would come to use us. I, d I don't see them doing that, yeah. but you know, people do everything that they they want so you yeah, never know yeah no, that's fine that's fine um and you've said you've got about a thousand vendors now do you do you uh, over a thousand listings so i reckon we've probably listings. got about 800, 800 um vendors. because some people have put three things that they're, they're advertising some people have right. put one some people put seven so okay we've got over a thousand so i think that the correct number i would go with is probably about 800 vendors okay um what, <laughs> sorry i'm just saying it back to myself and just thinking oh my gosh that's actually quite a bit it is quite a lot it is quite a lot um so i was going to ask how do you um identify vendors that you'd like to work with or are you in a st stage where you're still just advertising um or are you actually going out and looking for specific vendors i'm looking for everybody who has black -owned business i don't mind what your business is mm -hmm. um as long as it's black owned because i don't want to differentiate from what your business is or tell you that your business isn't good enough to advertise on our platform it's available to absolutely everybody yeah and the two criteria is that it has to be uk and yep. business and also um just a black owned business and that's about it i have um gone to various instagram pages and various um facebook pages and just said to them that this is booth blah blah yeah. blah do you want to advertise it's free mm -hmm. and i'm just trying to get so many different people and businesses so yeah. no i don't really have a um anybody i particularly want to work with it it's for everyone okay so i mean i've i've said i've been on booth and as i said i was surprised that there was vendors people were selling stuff um just give us an idea of some of the types of things you can buy on there just generally um you can buy i guess um shea butter and rum punch is um <laughs> i guess probably one of the most filled right okay. um okay on there yeah um you can also buy black books which is also a great one so there's some black books on there for children as well mm -hmm. which is perfect um and we've got some yoni stuff which i know quite a few people are into which is we've got like yoni pearls and um yoni steams and stuff like that which is right. quite different yeah um earrings accessories lipsticks black owned foundations and mm -hmm. stuff like that which you don't see everywhere um what else have, have we got on there we've got swimwear we've got clothing t-shirts sandals mm -hmm. bags i mean there's so many different things that you can get we've got quite a few different categories so you've got the skin cares that the makeups that the clothing the um the accessories and i think those are probably the main ones but there's yeah. quite a lot of stuff in there okay no, no, excellent, excellent. Um, how do you think COVID affected Booth? I mean, I know you set it up pretty much in COVID, but, but 
Yeah. How did I didn't know that when I when I put this question together. But how do you think it affected Booth? Do you think it probably increased the sales or increased the interest? A hundred percent. I think it was for me, it worked out perfectly because it means that people are at home looking for things to do mm. um, and they were able to find this platform. However, because of how the economy is at the moment, yeah. I think people are a little bit more cautious at yeah. how they spend mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because they don't know if they're job secure, they don't know all of these different things. So I don't think people are spending in the same way that they would have spent um, normally, yeah. um, which could affect us. But I think essentially um, COVID was probably a positive thing for us. Okay, okay. Um, and I, I know you've set up a, a, f- a few businesses before. If someone, if someone was thinking of setting up something similar to Buffet, what advice would you give them? Um, my first bit of advice would just be to do it um, and research different platforms. So mm-hmm. um, I use um, a marketplace platform which basically does everything that I need it to do. Okay. Um, and that was the easiest thing for me because I didn't want to do the route of getting a website designer and doing it that way just because I know sometimes if I want something I would have to go back to that website designer and them to make changes yeah. and at the, this time I just wanted the platform to be ready made okay. um, so I think research a platform that could work for you which I think um, is my biggest bit of advice mm-hmm. um, and I would say yeah just get it done we kind of talk about I'm going to do this I'm going to do that and then we don't and I think no disrespect to anybody there's a lot of the marketplaces that have said they're going to be launching that unfortunately I don't think they will launch Mm, mm -mm. just because it it dies down after a while and it does take a lot of work and as I said I've got my my son just turned one and I felt like oh my gosh the mum guilt came on Mm -hmm. because all hours at three o'clock in the morning while I'm giving him a feed I'm you know sorting out the website but I'm trying to do something for our future so yeah. No it seems like you could actually start giving advice on setting up businesses actually because you seem to be a bit clued up and you seem to I mean the fact that you delivered Booth in in such a short space of time really is amazing yeah. to be quite honest Thank you. Is, is definitely amazing um what are your plans for booth over the next year um over the next year i think i want it to be a place that if you want something black owned booth is the first place you go to so you just say oh i need some fairy cakes you go to booth and see if we've got it first mm-hmm. and then go to, to elsewhere but i think i would want that to be the main place that people go to look for things um and the the difficult not the difficulty but the way booth is it's kind of like a etsy slash gumtree yeah because on gumtree you can hire people and look for things we've also got a freebie section as well which you do have um on gumtree but it's also like etsy because a lot of the places um the people that advertise are personal bespoke um businesses as well so Mm -hmm. it's kind of like a between the two so i would love for us to be recognized as a main top three black owned business that people go to 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 get what they need yeah no no excellent and i suppose in another three to four years you'll be competing with amazon and the others oh goodness that is you know i'd love to because so many people funny enough do ask me about doing it like international but i think what i wanted to do is i wanted to crawl before i walked and i didn't want to take on everybody because I think when it comes to stuff like shipping it gets a little bit difficult yeah. because if you're shipping in the UK somebody puts okay three pounds shipping you know it's three pounds if somebody's from Africa you don't know how long it's going to take 27 yeah. pounds and yeah. it just gets a little bit too technical so right now I wanted to just um, concentrate on the UK but mm-hmm. in the next three to five years if we can be international mate that would be bloody amazing yes yes I'm, I'm sure you can get there i'm sure you can get there kelly yeah thank you i hope so um so you're if we want to find if we want to use booth um how do we get onto it you just go to www.booth.co.uk that's b-u-f-e.co.uk mm-hmm. yeah 
um yeah that's it just go on and uh, if you want to become a vendor there's a button that says become a vendor yeah um if you want to sign up to the site you just press sign up and become a user you'll get a welcome email and then you'll also get a weekly newsletter uh, telling you what's happened mm-hmm. on booth so if there's any official offers or anything like that you'll be signed up and you'll get that weekly and if we have quite a lot of people that um put things up you might even get two newsletters in a week in a week so yeah okay and do you, do you have to be a member of booth in order to purchase stuff yes so you when you do um go on to purchase something you do have to sign up and put in your details okay. um one thing that i would say um which makes booth a really great place to buy from is that if you're a business and you make a sale um we allow you three days to accept that sale because sometimes you might run out of stock or something like that. So yeah. we give you some time to accept the stock because what we don't want to do is accept it and then something you can't fulfill and then that looks bad on your business. Yeah. We allow yeah. you to take that sale as soon as the sale comes in. Booth holds the money and as soon as the um, the buyer clicks it marked um, as complete, that's when you'll get your funds released. And the okay. reason we've done this is because we want the seller and to, the buyer to have the same experience of, I bought this, my money's gone, but I've sold this and I've received my money. But right, okay. there are many places where somebody might send their money but not get their item. So we have to make sure that we're looking after both the buyer and the seller. Okay. And do you, uh, is there an opportunity to rate the sellers at this stage? Yes. Yeah. There's all feedback. If you go on the site and you go to anybody who's made sales, mm-hmm. as soon as it's complete, you're able to um, put some feedback on there. Um, and we've got, the last time I checked, I think we had over 50 um, messages of feedback on there okay. for our vendors. Yeah, pretty good. Oh, no, that's excellent. And Kaylee, what's the best way of contacting you? Um, well, the best place to contact me would be my Instagram, which is K-A-Y Loudmouth. Yeah. Um, I did have my Facebook, but um, I didn't really want to say this, but I think somebody had reported me. Um, and funny enough, somebody reported me just before Black Pound Day. Mm-hmm. And I am i don't know who it is, so I'm not going to say who it is. Right. But it meant that my um, personal Facebook was taken down and being reviewed and also my booth Instagram. All right. And I don't want to believe that it's somebody that has reported me or a competitor or something like that. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it was quite fitting that it was just before Black Pound Day and just before quite a few of these places were launching that yeah. I got taken off offline which was quite disheartening to be honest Mm -hmm. but um yeah but usually my Facebook is Kaylee Loudmouth Lewis so hopefully in the next week we'll be back up um or just contact me on Instagram which is K-A-Y Loudmouth which is my comedy name okay excellent yeah and I suppose when when can we get to see some more comedy from you or some comedy from you um I guess you could go on YouTube and type in Kaylee Loudmouth and get some old stuff (laughs) so (laughs) embarrassing but um hopefully We'll be we'll be back on um on the stages soon. I was meant to do a show in May, which was going to be in O2, and obviously that's been cancelled. I was like, oh, yeah. let's move it to August. But now we're still in COVID time, so yeah, yeah. I'm not quite sure. But hopefully, um, 2021, I'll be on a stage, unless I've made a lot of money from Booth, and therefore I'm in the Caribbean summer sunning it up. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, God willing. God willing. Um, Kaylee, it's been wonderful speaking to you today um and very encouraging and i'm hoping the listeners are encouraged by how quickly you've got booth off the ground and i'm testament to say it is off the ground i've seen the website i almost bought something on there not quite um oh yeah not well, almost Let's do you know what <laughs> do you know what i'll tell you what happened so i'm, gonna, I'm this is for the interview because we keep it real right so i went on there and i wanted to get a printed t-shirt but um i think oh, what was it i couldn't I'm just trying to remember what it was. No, that's what it was. That had the thing you've, you had to pay. I couldn't get to see the T-shirt. It was So I wanted my own design on it. And I couldn't get okay. to see it, but I had to pay for it. So obviously I was a bit oh, a bit nervous about that. So I didn't actually go sure. ahead with it. Um, but now you've kind of explained how that works. Um, but but in the case of when you're printing your own design, it, is, it was a bit difficult. Yeah, I think that would have to be something that the um the seller would have to do um, yeah. as opposed to booth itself so i guess you can have conversations so even if you were to just have a conversation with the person you wanted the t-shirt from yeah. and say this is what i want to do could you do a mock-up or something yeah, that's yeah, a conversation yeah. you would still be able to purchase um via the site mm-hmm. um but yeah i guess it depends on the seller as well and how they run their business yeah. as opposed to 
booth being able to intervene and help if that makes sense no that's fine excellent um as i said um thanks for coming on the show today it has been a great interview and i wish you all the best in the future for yourself and thank booth. You. all right brilliant thank you so much for contacting me and yeah great interview mm-hmm.